from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Wow. Well, look at that. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. It's Thursday. Time for another edition of Like Us 101. Like Us 101. Welcome to the class. Spend less dough and get more ass. So maybe you want a steak. Maybe you gotta wait. Cause I ain't spending more than $40 on a date. Buy ya. Look at don't buy ya. B. If she answers the cell phone, disappear. Wanna get laid? Gotta be an asshole. Spike dudes for the last dish with Tabasco. Hit it. Quit it. No time to spoon. These are the rules of Professor Pool. Gotta knock down, but you look in the switch. Pull a Hail Mary and dump that bitch. Just one on one. Up in the class, son. Huh? Like is 101, the ongoing on air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of Like is 101. Let's get it out of the way right at the beginning. Like is 101 is not marriage counseling. It's not like uh, a way to fix your relationship. We don't do that here because it is my decided opinion. That there is no benefit to men to get married, to live with anyone, <laughs> to have a girlfriend, have any kind of relationship. The purpose of this class is to learn how better to get laid. If you're looking for marital advice, seriously, consult Dr. Phil. Don't call here. Don't step up to our podium in our classroom. Because uh, it's just not what we do here. Remember, I've been divorced four times. I don't claim to be a marriage expert. And uh, many of you uh, somehow get the idea that I'm uh, some all-knowing, all-seeing individual who's going to help you fix your marriage. I don't believe in marriage. Yes, I've been divorced four times, and that's why I don't believe in it. I don't. Simple as that. The purpose of this class is to teach you how to get laid for less money. Uh, we don't want you to waste time, money, and energy on women who don't give you what you want, which is to get laid. Dating equals porking. The purpose of going on a date is to get laid. If you have a date scheduled for this weekend and getting laid is not your agenda, cancel it now, right now. Right now. Cancel it. Simple as that. I, I mean, you should be on the phone right now canceling that date, for Christ's sake. Like as 101 students don't spend more than $40 on a date. Zero is optimum. It doesn't matter how much money you spend, how many limos you have. It doesn't matter if you feed her lobster or champagne or expensive chocolate. It doesn't matter how many flowers you send or how many cards you send or how much jewelry you buy her. She's only going to have sex with you if she wants to. And that brings you to the three-date rule. Three strikes, you're out. If she doesn't put out the first three dates, it means there is no chemistry between you and her. Dump her. Stop going out with her. No lunch dates, no coffee dates, no dates where she brings her best friend, her roommate, her sister, her mother, or anybody else, her gay friend. Forget it. These are the all the people who are going to tell her not to have sex with you. If she is not willing to see you by herself, 
Forget it. Ever uh, been uh, out on a date and the woman says, uh, oh, my sister is at another club. Let's go meet up with her. Forget it. Ever have a date set and the woman calls you before the date and says, my best friend, her, her date flaked out. Do you mind if she comes along with us? Yes, you do. She's going to have to drive that person home when it's all over. And that's probably her excuse for getting out of having sex with you. For you, a date is you and her imbibing beverages or whatever other mood-altering substances you choose to use. And then as soon as possible, before she gets too drunk or too buzzed or too sick or whatever, you get her home to her place, you nail her six ways from Sunday, and then you get up, you towel off Big Jim and the twins, and you go home. There was no hugging, no squeezing, no caressing, no spooning, no staying overnight, no coming to your house. There's going to be no making babies, no sex without a condom. You don't want to be paying child support. You don't want to be getting committed. You don't want to be getting married. You don't want to owe money. You want to be free to do what you want, especially with the economy being lousy, boys. This is very important. Do not give your DNA away. Do not give your sperm away. Every sperm, every one of them, is like a big blank check with your name printed at the top. Don't give that stuff away. Condoms, 100% of the time. No single mothers. They already made one mistake, and that some schmuck is paying for it. Why should you make the next mistake with her? No girlfriends. By the way, my boys in the military were 18 and 19. Please, don't be having girlfriends or getting married before you get shipped off somewhere. I know how hard it is to serve our country. But it's going to be a lot harder when you find out the woman who married you at 18 or 19 is back here getting boned by every guy on the base. When you're in uniform and you're traveling to other countries, chicks dig a uniform. You'll get laid everywhere. You don't need to be married. You don't need to have a girlfriend. And you don't need to have any babies. Babies are just little annuities for these girls to latch out of your wallet and hold on for the ride. I can't make this any clearer. You are to avoid concerts. Too expensive. Sporting events. Too expensive. You are to avoid movies. Too much time wasted on your part. And now movies can run over 40 bucks, by the way. Between two tickets, two popcorns, whatever. Too expensive. Too much risk. You're to avoid dinner if you can. Meet her for drinks. Dinner not only is costly and a time waster, the more time you spend with her, the more time there is for you to put your foot in your mouth, to say something that will make her say, I don't want to have sex with you. I don't want to sleep with you. Keep it simple. Keep your mouth shut. Let her blather on and on and on because that's what these attention whores love. And if you're not getting laid, get the hell out. We've got many students out there who want more information on how to get laid, how to get laid more cheaply, how to get out of situations, how to avoid commitment, how to avoid relationships. That's what I'm here to do as your professor. And if you've got questions for your professor, you can call 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. And ladies, if you'd like to know how men think, if you disagree with what your professor has to say, you can start dialing now as well. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. All right, it's Like It's 101. Class is in session. Now all we need is you. Tom Like It. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Hi, guys. Tell all my boys out there that Hail Mary works. I've been there, done that, box t t-shirt, man. That stuff works. It's Likus 101 on the Tom Likus Show. It's the Tom Likus Show, Likus 101, 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Travis on the Tom Likus Show, hello. Hello, father. Hello, son. 
Hey, listen, Father. Uh, so I just left this girl's house about 20 minutes ago. We're hooking up, doing a little work downstairs. She tells me she wants to have sex. So, you know, it sounds great. Don't have a condom, though. She's pushing the issue for about 10, 15 minutes, and I'm just standing firm, you know. Definitely not going to do that. You know, she keeps going, why? Come on, let's just do it. Come on. You know, and I'm, I'm thinking, you know, there's no chance I'm about to do this. Finally, after just, you know, begging me, she goes, oh, you know what? I think I have a condom in my uh, drawer up there. Go check. Get up. Go check the drawer. It's got a box of condoms, which pissed me off because she had been begging for about 20 minutes to do it without one. I pick up a condom. I look at her. And I just go, you know what? I got to go. Get my stuff. Leave the house right away. Good for you. Yeah, 21 years old, Tom. i listening to you for about six years. I've uh, been following your rules, you know, last five, six years, and uh, it's done me well for all those uh, men that call in and uh, say they wish they did it the right way. You know, I'm, I'm proof. I'm 21 years old, getting more ass in a public toilet seat, and it's all because of, uh, of you, Tom. just want to say thanks. I'm proud, Travis. Thank you. Take me out, uh, Kobe style. Kobe style. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. Here comes Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Mr. Tom Likas. How you doing, man? All right, Mr. Mike. I just had to call you. I'm a first-time listener, and honestly, I listened to you for 10 minutes, and I couldn't agree with you more. I'm 24 years old from Sherman Oaks, and I have never had a girlfriend in my life, and it's lovely. I Absolutely love that. Lovely. Absolutely lovely, Tom, I got to tell you. And you know what? To my, I realize that girls want to get laid just as bad as guys do, and all they want is an excuse. So the dates, throw that away. They come to my house, we drink or we use whatever substance we have to and that's their excuse and they forget they bring the friend over the oh my my friend's date didn't make it okay well my friends do too me and my friend have uh let's say in the wrestler's term tagged a lot of girls in my time <laughs> <laughs> and it's fun a girlfriend is not needed nor is a is a wife no ever never no no there there are luxuries you can afford to do without Oh, yeah, all day long. And you know what? I don't believe I'll ever have a girlfriend in my life. The bachelor life is the best thing in the world. You know? <laughs> These guys out here who are doing this girlfriend thing and doing this wife thing, you're right, there are no benefits. You're married and you're locked down. You're, you're locked down forever. If you're going to do that, do everything you want to do, get it out the way <laughs> before you do that, because that's like jail forever. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that's my belief, Tom. But you know what? I believe you. I, I mean, I, I go by what you say to the fullest. I listened to you for your first 10 minutes, your intro, and I was like, who is this guy, Tom? I was like, thank you, my boy Terrell, for letting me know this not, this uh, 97.1 channel, because I'm going to listen to you all the time now. <laughs> Love it. Thank you, Mike. So can you can you take me out uh, Kobe style with some Snoop at the end? Yes, yes, I can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Uh, yeah, the air I breathe. Uh, She's so special to me. Uh, 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 1 800, well, 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. It's Melissa on Like Is 101 for your professor. Hello? Hey, Tom. Hi. Um, I'm just calling because I have a question. Well, I've been with this guy. He's my boyfriend. I've been with him for about a year, and he has mentioned marriage. I'm 20, and he's 25, and I just kind of wonder, like, what are his motives? I mean, is he being serious, or in your perspective, what is this about? What, getting married? Yeah, I mean, I am I feel like I... I don't even want to get into that, but it's like, is he being serious or is he just trying to tell me that because it's what I, what he thinks I want to hear? Well, a lot of guys, uh, when they are younger, uh, want to marry you to keep you from dating other guys. So is it that he still wants to date around, but he's just saying that to keep me around? Well, I don't know if he wants to date around, but he doesn't want you dating around. That's true. So I, I wouldn't call that love. I would call that ownership. Okay. 
what do you think I should do? At 20, you shouldn't be getting married. No, of course not, but this is more like later on down the road type thing. I mean, I agree with everything that you always talk about, and I'm in no rush for anything. But, but I think at 20, you shouldn't have a boyfriend. I think you should be dating around. I don't want to be like a whore. You don't have to sleep with 100 guys. But at the least, you should be meeting guys, having dinner with guys, having drinks with guys. Uh, um, God only knows uh, where you could go. I mean, this is this guy the ultimate? Is he Albert Einstein? Is he the top lawyer in the country? Is he, uh, what is he? <laughs> um, he's just, he's a great guy, but I just, I don't know, it's kind of confusing. Doesn't have much going for him? No, he does, definitely. I mean, he's, he's already, he has a career and... Um, what career is that? He works with uh, computers. Yeah, well, uh, that doesn't tell me much. Is he a software engineer? What is he? Yes, he is. He's a software engineer. No. And at 20, you feel you've dated so many people. You know the entire length and breadth of the male population. I also feel like I've found a great guy and... You know, I should stick yeah, around. Yeah, but at 20, I'm not so sure you know a great guy when you see one. But you hear, I hear of, like, so many, you know, other guys that just cheat and date and just, you know. I'm not saying don't date him. I'm saying don't limit yourself. Okay. I mean, you're asking me for my opinion, and then you're arguing with me about it. No, you're right. I mean, it's it's true. I mean, if you don't want my advice, don't don't call in. No, I love it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, trying, I'm, I'm giving you what you asked for. Okay. I think at 20 years old, I think you should be seeing the world. You're right. I mean, have you ever left the country? Are you Sarah Palin? Of course. No, of course I have. Where have you been? Uh, Europe. Which countries? Uh, London and Rome. London's not a country. Uh, and nor is Rome. But, okay. You've been to two cities outside the United States. That's not a lot of traveling. Some um, for twenty. Ever dated a guy when you were in Europe? No. <laughs> Darling. That's one of the great pleasures that women have is going to someplace like France or Italy, meeting a man, having him take you around, having coffee with him at a little cafe, going to his little apartment and going for it. What goes on the road stays on the road. Don't you have any sense of adventure? No, of course. But I would think that you could do with a significant other, you know. No, you, you can't. It's not the same. Right. I've done it both ways. Right. It's not the same. It pretty much comes down to just being too young and living. Right. You're too life. young. And uh, yeah, you know, when you go with a significant other, it's like being married. It's like being an old married couple. I know. That's what it it's is. already a routine. You get up in the morning. What are we going to do? Have breakfast? All right. I'll, we'll go out of the lobby and have breakfast. Then we'll figure out what we're going to do. When you go by yourself, you meet guys. You have real adventure. You're so right. Thanks, Tom. And, but, and, and you're 20 years old. Now's the time to be doing that. You're right. So that you don't get swept off your feet after you've been married five years. That's so true. Thanks, Tom. All right, I Melissa. So I love listening to it, and I think you're right about pretty much everything you say. Well, thank you for the call. Good luck to you. It's Likus 101. I am your professor, Tom Likus. Our telephone number is 1-800-5800-TOM. That's 1-800-5800-866. This is Terry. Terry's listening to the online stream in Arlington Heights, Illinois, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. I think my boyfriend graduated summa cum laude from your class 101. I'm certain of it. Very nice. How could you tell? Well, a couple things. First of all, this movie thing is right on. I love movies. We never go. Only, well, if we did go, he said uh, you'd get a bucket of popcorn, dump all the popcorn out, and I would stand here. Why would he do that? Well, oh, the, oh, the bottom of the bottle is popcorn? <laughs> he's going to put Big Jim through there. <laughs> this, is, this is one of the first things he said to me. Let's see. This is how I know for sure. It was like, oh, I don't know, maybe we've been seeing each other a month. 
And I said, do you want to be exclusive? And he said that he did, and I got all excited, right? Thinking, oh, he just wants to date me or whatever, only to find out that he just didn't want any other strangers on his turf, if you know right, what I he mean. Didn't want anyone, he didn't want anyone else dating you. Exactly. That's what he meant by exclusive. <laughs> exactly. And what he's doing now, all his male buddies, who are some friends of my girlfriends, I think he's teaching them your class. <laughs> Because he, he used to live in Portland. That, that's, I'm certain that this is, he's a summa cum laude graduate. Wow. There's only one thing, there's only one thing that, that um, was a little wrong with said to wipe off the Jim and the boys. He does let me do that at the end. Oh, well, that, 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 that doesn't violate my rule. Uh, but I will say this, uh, here's another, uh, 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 hint that he's a one-on-one student. You're still fascinated with him. I'm still what? Fascinated with him. Oh, extremely. Yeah, after five years. Right? And the more, the more he doesn't give you what you want, the more you want him. That's right. But the other thing that he gets from me... If I haven't done something, I want to do it. He loves that variety. We have done everything. Really? Yes. Wow. So I might be like the female counterpart of this Tom 101 thing. So you're the kind of chick who'll do whatever a 101 student says. Yeah, I'm, I am not. I wouldn't call myself a sub, but I'm definitely not a dom. <laughs> <laughs> But you're up for just about everything, are you, Terry? Uh, pretty much, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty much out there, I'd say. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, he, would you say you're wilder than the other girls in Arlington Heights? Am I wilder than the other girls? I would say I'm more open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, uh, I won't tell them about being snappers, right? No. <laughs> Hello? I'm right here. What what are you, what are you not going to tell me about? Bean snappers. Bean snappers. Bean snappers. Is that something we can talk about on the air? You know, I don't know if there's like X-rated topics. <laughs> well, I, I have a feeling I know what bean snappers might be, and I have a feeling that we can't talk about that. Okay. All right. Are, are you uh, a bean snapper? Yes. No, it was a it was a male entertainment place that we went uh, to. Well, uh, yeah, named after uh, a term, terminology. But it was amateur night. It was the first time ever I'd been in a place like that. I had a lot of fun. Really? Did you get up on the pole? I did. Really? Hmm. Did you take it all off? Yeah. Is that so? He was fine with it. You know what he liked? What? He said he liked that the other men in the audience wanted to have their lap dance with me instead of the girls that worked there. I love that. See? So did you give a lap dance or did you have a lap dance? Um, we did both, actually. Really? Yeah. We went back into the room and did that. And then I gave her the, all the tips. I, I gave the worker my tips. So then I made friends with the girls. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. You're out of control. Yeah, I like to have fun, you know. You don't get any younger. Are you hot? Uh oh. He wants to know if I'm hot. He says I'm hot. I'm five really? eight br five eight brunette, one thirty eight dimples. Yeah, you know. I'm I'm easy on the eyes probably. Very nice. But so is he. He's a, he's a badass biker. Oh, is that so? Yeah. But he he definitely went to your class. Cause I now, love that. Yeah, he, he does, because he definitely has your principles. Well, that sounds good to me, Terry. Thank you. Like is 101 at half past the hour on the Tom Like is show, 1-800-5-800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Here's Sonia on Like is 101. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. 
I basically just wanted to talk to the girls out there, the ones that, I don't know, maybe think it's cool or it's a big joy in their lives to have a kid so young, and it's really not. I mean, when I found out I was pregnant, I had just turned 21, <laughs> so I, it kind of sucked, but, I mean, I did everything right. I, I took birth control, and this I'm one of the... Um, I'm one of the people that got pregnant while they were on birth control. I took it every single day at 12 o'clock sharp. Same time, same everything. Took it all, took it every single day. But found out that I was pregnant and just could not, within me, could not have an abortion. And now that two years later, now that I know better, if I could do it all over again, I would probably have the abortion. That sounds really sad to say because I absolutely love my son. He is my world. But I was just too young, and I didn't realize it then. I was too young at 21 to make a huge decision like that. And, I mean, I cannot believe that there's some girls out there that would try to get pregnant or want to get pregnant in their 20s. It's just ridiculous to me. I was listening to you talk to that 20-year-old girl. You know, you were telling her, I mean, she she's not tied down. She just has a boyfriend. She doesn't have kids. She really can do whatever she wants. She can go to Europe. She can travel. She can meet a ton of guys. I mean, she can do whatever she wants, and I can't. So that's just what it comes with. So you wish you did some of the things I'm suggesting here. Yeah, I didn't have my college degree. I haven't been outside of the United States in my lifetime. I mean, there's so much that I haven't done and so much that I'm going to miss out on. And I've, at my personal decision, I've decided to just have my son and not have kids at all. Still be young by the time he goes to college. I'll still be I'll be 39 when he goes off to college. So I'll still be young. I can enjoy my life then. But it's not like it would have been if I would have done it in my 20s. And a lot of girls don't realize that until they're in that position. Until they find themselves pregnant, they have the kid, and then they get it. But then it's too late. I mean, I know as mothers, we love our kids and everything. But every single day, I, I'm Literally, every single day, I wonder what my life would have been like today if I would have chose differently, you know? So you think about that. I do. I think about it all the time. When I hear about my friends doing things, it it's sort of depressing. I was listening to that girl talk, and I was listening, I was actually listening to you talk to her about how she can go on these adventures and go off to Europe and stay there for a couple of weeks and just kind of, you know, take her backpack and take the train wherever she wanted to and meet whoever she wanted to, basically do whatever she wants, and I can't do that. It really does depress me sometimes when I think about it. And I was one of those girls that said, I will never get an abortion. I cannot kill my own child. But, I mean, it's... This world is overpopulated anyway. Not that my son is a waste of space, because he's going to be great. But this world's overpopulated anyway, and it's just, why? Why would you want to do it? That's what I say. Why? Why would you want a kid so young? My best friend got married when she was 18. She's divorced now. I mean, it just shows that when you're in your teens or your early 20s, or even your late 20s, you just can't make decisions like that. It, you don't realize it until later. I mean, I think girls, you're right. Yeah, girls have this whole fantasy, this, this family life, marriage life, and it's not worth it. By the way, uh, what happened to the father of your kid? Oh, we're still together, and we're, we're actually doing really well. We're actually doing really well. So I'm thankful for that. I don't... It would really suck to be a single mom, but he's a fantastic dad. He really is. He's a great man. He's, oh, I, I love him to death. I'm, I'm thankful that my situation so far has turned out well, but I, I still would have taken it back. Me and him, we could have had such a blast together without my son. I Believe me, I feel terrible saying all this. I feel like I'm saying that I wish my son was never here, which... I guess is basically what I'm saying. But I, I love my son. I just know I could have had Think of it this of way. Life. Think of it this way. You wish your son came along seven years from now. Pretty much. I did not want to have kids until I was at least 30. And that was my plan. My my sisters started, have, started having kids really young. My parents got really serious young. And I, I did not want a part of that. And I was faithful with my birth control. And it happened anyway. And I made the decision to keep my son... And in a way, I regret it, and in a way, I don't. So I'm just kind of 50-50 with that. But 
I, I really just want to tell girls out there, if you have that decision to make and you're unsure, just have the abortion. If you're unsure in any way, just have the abortion. You'll be so thankful later when you're doing great things in your life and you stop and think, oh, wow, this probably wouldn't have been able to happen because I'd have a two-year-old or a three-year-old or whatever. You know, you'd be worried about potty training and school and stuff like that, but it's just not worth it. Yep, Sonia, good points. Thank you for the call. Tom. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom. one 800 5800 I love your show, and for all those women that hate you, screw them. <laughs> yeah, screw, why? I'm, I'm working on that. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show, Likas 101, I am your professor, 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number, Cecilia, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi. Hi. So, I have a problem. I'm listening, dear. Okay, I'm 28, never been married. And I had a one-night stand with a good friend of mine, um, and I just found out I'm pregnant and about two weeks along. Were you using birth control? No. So you wanted to have a baby? No. Then why no. weren't you using birth control? Because I, I fully expected him to use a condom, and at the last second, he didn't, and... I was yeah, but like, why weren't you on? Why weren't you on birth control? Um, I don't know. I just don't. It, it, I've taken it before, and it makes me really hormonal. So yeah, but there's there's eleven or twelve different forms of birth control. Well, I I know I didn't use any. Why not? That's a good question. I the just, answer I, is you know, okay. Because I look honestly, deep into your soul. You want to have a baby. Uh, you know what? I do, but not not like this. But, Darling, so, if you didn't want to have one like this, you'd have been on birth control. I don't think so. Then why weren't you on birth control? Well, I I wasn't planning on sleeping with this guy for one thing. I don't. I yeah, don't but know how do you know you're not gonna? How do you know you're not gonna meet another guy? I don't. That's my point. So <laughs> I guess I, I honestly just felt like it just wasn't going to happen to me. Stupid. I still can't. I can't believe it. You're an adult. You're 28 years old. You're not 19. You're not 16. Somebody's getting pregnant. Why not you? I think I kind of had it in my head because with my first um, boyfriend, I lived with him for three years. We had sex like five times a week. And we never used anything. Maybe his sperm count wasn't high enough. What's that? Maybe, maybe he's impotent. Well, that could be. I mean, did you ever get his sperm count checked? No. Maybe that's why. That's true. So what are you going to do now? I need... I need something like I can't I know all the reasons why I shouldn't have this kid and a I don't know if I should tell the guy I guess it doesn't really matter we'll like, get to that what's that we'll get to that okay but I need to I need just someone to pound in my head why I shouldn't do this because I know all the reasons why I shouldn't and I just can't dig deep enough to, All to right, let's, di let's start digging. Let's start digging. Do you have a career? Uh, not really. What do you do for a living? I'm going to school right now. Yeah, why are you going to school at 28? Um, financial reasons. You couldn't afford to go to school at 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. I did off and on. Cross side track. What does that mean, off and on? Why were you doing that? Well, I was, I was, uh, I had to work. I moved out of my parents' house at a young age, and I had to work two jobs. And what about community college? 
I did. That's what I'm saying. I've been off and, and on. Just... But why couldn't you afford to go to community college? It costs almost nothing. Um, well, that's not entirely true, but I guess I just I made some poor choices. I'm I'm getting back on track. Obviously, I've made yet another one. So you're busy dating. What were you doing, dating? No. no. What were you doing with your time? Working. Working? And what was your goal in working so much? To get ahead. Wouldn't it make more sense to go to school to get ahead? That's true. So what I'm so, doing now. Uh, but, all right, so you made the decision late. You figured it out after all this time. That's right. And what do you think having a baby is going to do to that? It, it'll be derailed permanently. That's true. Permanently. Is that what you want? No. What's going to happen to your friendship with this guy? If. When you tell him that you're pregnant. I have no idea. Right. Point is, if you have the baby, he, uh, he's going to want to know, you know, who's the lucky guy. Your good pal. He's going to want to know who's the lucky guy? Yeah, who's the father? Why do you say that? He's your friend. <sighs> Don't your friends ask questions like that? Um, yeah, but you think he'll figure it out. Why would you assume that? Maybe because he'll be he... in denial like you were about birth control. Maybe he'll just think, oh, it must be somebody else's because she never said anything. I don't know. This is good because the way you're talking is scaring me. And then, yeah. <laughs> you're not thinking about any of this stuff. I know. I, what, if he, just, what if you want to have an abortion and he doesn't want you to? Don't tell him. I wouldn't. Why didn't you take the morning after pill? I don't know. I just, because you want to have a baby. I don't. Seriously, I don't. Have you ever heard of the morning after pill? Yeah, I, I wouldn't know how to get one. <laughs> Do you ever think of, like, Googling or... Calling Planned Parenthood or somewhere like that? You're right. I just didn't think it would happen. But but once he had sex with you without a condom, uh, the morning after pill guarantees it won't happen. Well, without being really descriptive, like, um, you know, there's other me methods when you have sex that I didn't. I mean, you must have, like, had a little accident. Darling, the pull-out method is a myth. I know. It's always worked for me, so that's why I'm, like, I know... It's uh, you you don't know if that's the reason you didn't get pregnant. He might have been incapable of uh, conceiving with you. True. You don't know why you didn't get pregnant. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you will be giving up your career. You're not marrying, and you're not going to marry this guy. You're clearly not in love with him. No, no. Right. So there you'll be with a kid, nobody to help you raise it, hitting up your friend for child support. That I would never do. I would I don't believe in that. Yeah, how, are you, how are you going to pay for that? How are you going to pay for a baby? I know these are all reasons. I'm just like, I've been so ingrained in that abortion is like killing and I just can't. I'm so afraid that if I do that, I'm going to never have an opportunity to have kids. Darling, of course you can have an opportunity to have kids. Where'd you get that idea from? Well, I thought that sometimes when you have an abortion, it can mess up your body and... So can pregnancy. That's true. 
Most people I know who have kids had at least one abortion first. Really? Yes. Well, that's good to know. And you can verify that with any doctor. Okay. As long as they don't have a fish symbol in their uh, in their ads or their signage in the the office. A what? You know the little Jesus symbol. <laughs> yeah. No, and I I know like I've heard you say so many times, and it's true that people want to get religious when it comes to having abortion. But what about when they were fornicating, which is right. so true. So I don't pull. I don't think like in a religious point of view. I'm just like I don't know. I just still have that. You gave up the religious point of view when you fornicated. Yeah. If you're I guess old in enough a way, to... I feel like uh, that it's taking responsibility for my stupid action that I can't just go off. Like You are taking responsibility. You're not going to bring an unwanted child into the world. That's being very responsible. That's true. All right, Charlie, we're running out of time here, so I'm going to leave you at this, but uh, I wish you the best of luck. Let us know what happens. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.